Hello everyone, in this Inkscape tutorial video I'll be showing you how to do tracing. So the reason you might want to use tracing is if you're not very good at drawing people but you want a person in your vector image. So a good trick is to take a photograph of a person, trace around them and then you can put that in your image or manipulate it in a way that is within your ability. So that's a good idea with Inkscape and I've done that myself before on a couple of wallpapers. So Inkscape does have an automated tracing ability within it, but um, well, all I can say is I'm sure someone did the absolute best that they could manage with the software. But unfortunately, it is very difficult for computers to understand images and pick out discernible objects. Whereas for us, it is actually a very simple thing to do and something we learn from let's say very young and we know about it for our lives so trying to teach that to a computer is a world apart from our own understanding so yeah even on the guide with the Inkscape help it says if your goal is to get a few nodes and a good precision manual tracing is always best so to start with let's discuss a bit of the theory about what we're going to do so let's start off with a very freehand line i'm just going to color this so we can see which is which when i come to uh, do some more work on these things so yes i'm going to color that line there and then i'm going to get then i'm going to get my pen tool so that's the draw bicep curves and straight lines so i make my first point just near the end of that line there so what we want to do is put the nodes at the points when there is a dramatic change of direction with the line. So we're going to use the curving ability with the pen tool to make up a lot of the curves, but uh, we're going to pick that up later. So initially I just want to get the points where the line dramatically changes direction. So I'm going to make it with as few nodes as possible. So we've got a bit of a change of direction there, change of direction there, uh, let's say here and here, the end of that curve, there, and where are we going to take that one to? Oh, we might get away with probably right up to about there, possibly. There, and oh, this is an interesting curve. So maybe that point there, end of that curve, and that's the end of that line. So just go over, shoot it slightly. So that is the line that I'm going to work with and match to my little freehand line. So I'm going to edit the path by nodes. So I'm going to drag the line and make it a curve. So if I click on it again, those are the handle points that have generated the curve and I can move those if necessary. So I like to just make the basic line first and then go with the curves later. So it's kind of the order I've gone with, which can take a little bit of guesswork perhaps. Um, it might be a, a very unusual way to sort of see the line or, or wonder how it's going to be generated but yeah this sort of thing is possible um, okay this one's going to be a bit difficult to get with just a drag in so I need to get the handles here and oof. do you know this one might be a bit difficult to do so I'm going to add an extra node in here so I'll double click on the path add the extra node in there and oh okay so you've made it so it's made it a symmetrical node whereas i want a corner node so i'm just going to change that yep i can put that handle in a different way to there and there we go let's drag that over to there again that's perhaps a bit too much to do there so i need an extra node in there so i double click on that and that's sort of close enough so you get the idea of what I have tried to do there. Okay, so it's not perfect here, but I want to give you the theory of what we're trying to achieve. There's another trick here. If you want to make a better corner there, you can double click each side of the node and then I'm going to delete it. So get a little bit more of a curved edge on there. And I do that simply by selecting the node and then pressing the delete key. So there we go. That is the theory of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to make as few nodes as possible against the objects we're trying to trace. So with that in mind, what we can do is actually trace around an image. So let's drag in an image here and let's have a rubber duck. I thought a rubber duck would actually be feasible enough to do in a single video and not be overly long. 
So I'm going to have to separate this out into individual parts to get the fill effect. So at its basic point, we've got an orange beak, we've got a green body, we've got an eye with, well, it's made up of three circles, so I can do the circle tool for that. And I'm going to disregard the wing for the moment. Uh, I don't want to make this video overly long. And there's a bit of a line there for shading on the head of the duck. So I might make the head a separate object to the body. So I'm trying to make as few nodes as possible, but looking for a dramatic change in direction. So that's going to kind of be uh, about there, 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 and there. Four nodes. So it looks like a square at the minute. So that's pretty much four nodes to make up a circle. And I'm just dragging the curve out to the approximate point of the head of the duck. So something like that. And ooh, a bit difficulty here. But if I click on the line, I can get the handle up and do some more precise editing there. So, okay, it's something like that. And that's there. So I think there's a bit of a sharp corner there. So I can add a couple of nodes in to blunt that corner down sort of a simplest way of blunting the corner, although I could do with some more precise editing perhaps, but double clicking each side of that node that I want to blunt down and then deleting the node itself. So obviously I'm increasing the number of nodes around the head, but going for the simple possible way of blunting it down on the corner. So something like that, I think. Obviously I've not got the curve right there, but look, we're gonna go with it for the sake of this video. So I've got the snapping for snapping to nodes. That's what I want to go for. Handle to cusp a node. And let's do the body. So change the direction there, another change of direction there. And ooh, what can we get away with for the tail? Hmm. I think it's just gonna to have to be that point at the middle of the tail. Um probably halfway down its body, maybe. Maybe about there, and one for the base there, maybe that, and then back to the starting point of the line. So as we've done before, drag the line out, uh, do some more precise editing with the handles there. There we go. I'm going to have the body go behind the head, and then I'll just overlay it on the layers. So I'll go over something like that just for simplicity. Many years ago I had a job where I drew maps, cartography, and this is kind of where I picked up some of these tricks. <laughs> I was thinking many years ago, uh, yeah, the best part of 20 years ago. You know when you get old when you start thinking, oh it was only a few years ago and then you realise um, <laughs> a few years ago turns out to be many decades ago. <laughs> I think that is the point for me where I started feeling old. Anyway, that's not too bad there. I might go for blunting that corner down. So add a couple of nodes there, get rid of that node. And yeah, that's not too bad there. Then we need the beak, yeah, use a pen tool again. So the beak, um, was it node there, node there, uh, node there, another node there, because we're going to round off at the end of the beak and something like that. And drag the line out. So which way does this beak go? Because it looks fairly straight to me. So it's hard to tell because it's got quite a bit of a fade on it. So do you know, I think it's fairly straight really. Probably doesn't require too much of a curve on that line I just did. But then that corner looks a bit sharp, so I'm just gonna blunt that down. Blunt down the bit of the corner. Ooh, still a bit sharp, isn't it? Oh. I don't think I deleted correctly. There we go. So I drag that line out and a line out here. So again, very sharp on that corner. So we'll blunt it down a little bit. There we go. So that's now a nice rounded corner. Obviously there is a line in the middle of the beak, but I'm hoping that uh, just a line overlaying it will be enough. So now the eyes. So this is going to be three circles, isn't it? Uh, three circles without stroke, preferably. So we'll have a white circle to start with, or a almost white. 
So I'm going to have to draw over the top of these and then I'll sort them back out afterwards with the ordering on the Z layer. So with the circle, if you hold down control, then you will make a precise circle. So that one's going to be black. And then the last circle is going to be white. But I could also duplicate the circle with control D and then control and shift that enlarges it. Although shift keeps it centered. Uh, let's just go a bit larger there. That should do it and white for that part of the eye. So uh, this is the outer layer of the eye, so that needs to be down a bit. Uh, the black needs to be down a layer. So down another layer for you. Oh, let's get this ordering done. There we go. So that is the eye sorted. So now all I need to do is color it in. So I'm just gonna drag the underlying image away. So hold down control and move that away. And it's just a case of sorting out the shading. If I want precision shading, then uh, yeah, I'll have to pick the screen color. Um, get that. Obviously, there's way more I could be doing with the shading, but the part we were looking at really was the tracing, and that's uh, what I've really covered in this video. Just the tracing around the image, trying to do the smallest number of nodes possible. Yeah, let's try that. So that's the head, uh, the body, We'll go with a similar color again. Um, there we go. We'll do a quick gradient. Go on, let's do it. Let's do a quick gradient. Uh, so I want the gradient from going from sort of probably halfway down and uh, to the bottom, probably even less than that. Something like that. We want to have the bottom end of the gradient being uh, we just want a slightly darker version, but without the transparency. So blend opacity full. Oh. It's probably something more like that, really. That's a bit basic and crude, but as I said, it's not a shading video. And there we go. Let's color the beacon. So we'll get a fill color on that. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so there's one thing missing there, and that is the white. It's still... A layer below this isn't it there we go that's got it so that was a look at how to do tracing in inkscape so the idea is to drop the nodes at where you have a drastic change in the line that you're tracing and you use the handles and the curve of the line to make up the rest of it so you produce the minimum number of nodes possible to get a nice crisp clean looking drawing the number of sections you split it out into is more dependent on the amount of shading you want to do in the drawing. If you have a very simplistic shading, let's just say one flat color, then you wouldn't need to split it out into different sections. But as you saw what I did with the heads there, I had to split that out into a couple of sections just to be able to get the fill and shading effect with the head onto the body. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.